pedigrees are used to track genetic traits through a family tree. Squares represent males and circles females. Shaded shapes represent individuals that express the trait and non-shaded shapes represent individuals where the trait is not expressed. The different generations are noted by Roman numerals. Autosomal pedigrees track genetic traits located on the autosomal chromosomes, i.e. chromosomes 1 to 22. In other words, traits that are not affected by the sex of the individual. These different locations are called alleles and can either be dominant or recessive. A dominant trait is expressed if one or both alleles are dominant, while a recessive trait is only expressed if both alleles are recessive. When both alleles are the same, we call that homozygous. And when one is dominant and the other is recessive, we call that heterozygous. Let's look at an example to try to determine together if the trait is recessive or dominant. Let's begin by assuming that the trait is recessive. We need to try out the different possibilities throughout the generation to check if it holds true. Let's start by assuming that the other parent is homozygous dominant. We quickly notice that this would mean that all the children are heterozygous dominant and would therefore not express the recessive trait as they do in this case. But what about if the parent was instead heterozygous dominant? Then we see that the chance that these parents will have children with either recessive traits or heterozygous dominant traits are 50-50. Therefore, this could very well be the case. What would then happen in the next generation where both children are recessive? Well, for the child on the left, an identical situation would occur as with the parents and the partner would have to be heterozygous dominant for the results to work out. For the child on the right, their partner is also recessive for the trait and as a result, 100% of their children would also be recessive. This matches with what we observe. However, if the trait was instead dominant, we would end up with mostly the same situation, but in reverse. In other words, in this particular case, both scenarios work out, meaning that we do not have enough information to determine if this is a recessive trait or a dominant trait. But hopefully you still learned the general thought process of how to walk through this problem in order to solve it. If you want to learn more about X-linked traits in pedigrees, check out this video.